there is a point to order when you're meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, I'd like to take a couple minutes to talk about our uh, next scheduled meeting until January 3rd. Okay. Any other items? No. Uh, Storage. The mill house is six hundred and ten dollars and eight cents. The library four hundred eighty five dollars and twenty three cents. Um, Johnson Town Garage one thousand one hundred ninety three dollars and twenty nine cents. And the historical society four hundred thirty dollars and thirty two cents for a total of seven thousand eight hundred thirty three dollars and ninety nine cents for fuel. Was it having lunch? Yeah, it's a lot of fuel. And how is this split up between the town and the The diesel fuel. Is it on those meters? Okay. Um, the city cards. Uh, there was postage on the card for six dollars and sixty-six cents. <laughs> Evil postage. Can't help that, right? <laughs> Grant fund purchases for six hundred and ninety dollars and seventy cents. What is that, Rosemary? That's library. Okay. Um, building and maintenance repair and supplies, sixty-six dollars and seventy-six cents. With our parts and supplies, two hundred forty. Uh, sorry, two hundred fifty-four dollars and thirty-eight cents. Um, office supplies, twelve dollars and ninety-nine cents, and professional training for one hundred and fifteen dollars. For a total of one thousand one hundred forty-six dollars and forty-nine cents on the card. Compass Minerals America for Bolt Highway, of course, with your salt, $2,063.38. Greenout Library membership, um, books on tape and grant fund purchases, uh, each $248.90 for a total of $497.80. Farm welding supply, the wheel flap disc. $183.25. Identification source for dog tags, $256.56. Ingram, books on tape, adopt an author, and grant fund purchases, $1,125.28. Johnson Harbor and Rental, a hanger slash towel slash hook. So, hook. Uh, enable, an, I'm sorry, enamel adapter. For $117.96 and a drill hanger bracket for $147.72. Jordan's Electrical for a reprogram alarm. Um, this is split between the town and the village for $47.50 for a total of $95. NATO's um, Whitcomb Island Road construction projects uh, capital. $7,034.94. Priority Express Interlibrary Program, $81.88. South Burlington Library, Adopt an Author, $15.99. TD Bank Credit Card Payment, um, $133.85 is for acquisition. Miscellaneous expenses $30 and office supplies for $35.28 for a total of $199.13. We have a 645 thing again. I don't know how long it's going to take for that to sink in. 
It is hard. One of these days, Donna. Uh, Vermont toner recharge for toner $125. Uh, VLC property insurance eleven thousand dollars. Sorry, eleven thousand five hundred thirty-six dollars. Is there any comment question concern? No, thanks for Alex. So it's very helpful. Um, well, we're on this thread. I have been on some business today and I was at John's Farm and Garden. All the highway guys was there. And the clerks did not require a signature. They don't require signatures or initials before anybody takes possession of something from the store. It's what we just went through. We'd want to know who took it. Oh, yeah. I should do what I uh, Well, I'm not sure how we get that message out to the merchants that we expect anything being charged to the county. Some of the initials. Most of those from the merchants are not the end of the years at the time. The clerk told the employee that they were all set to worry about it. The employee asked if, like, if they should be signing something, and the clerk told them not to worry about it. So, um, I guess it's more on the clerk, the store clerk, you know. Or, I don't think our, you know, I'm not aiming with the highway guys, so I think they're doing what they're supposed to do. I think we communicate that to the vendors that we, we do want somebody to sign on. Please ensure that somebody initials and signs, you know, is taking possession of whatever it is. We can communicate to the guy that even if the clerk said, you don't need to sign for this. Well, I was curious if they, if Tell them that they got hmm? is they get a receipt? Because I told we're supposed to pay them. supposed to bring back the receipt. I didn't, didn't see any, any receipt handed, but there could have been. Since I found that I still think for the bill that's coming into the town, we should be able to look at the invoice from the store. And it could have been somebody from the rest of it. Yeah. Always sees the item, we don't know who, who actually took it. That's not what we should have. We decided to restrict it to who could do that, right? That it was only employees, so but yes, it should be definitely signed. So, can you share that with our vendors? Okay, and um, the, 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 even if they're told you don't have to sign for it, yeah. we'd like them to. At least initial or something. Is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of December 6th and 15th? I never got the 15th. Neither. Hmm. Well, let's see the 15th. Wait, where's the 15th? Oh, those are the joint ones. Right? Yes, yeah. I thought yes. we got. So, that, so they can okay. show by the end of the day today. Those are the ones that I'm Okay. Okay. So the December sixth one is the one we've already seen, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's the board pleasure on December sixth? Motion to approve uh, minutes presented for December sixth. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Motion second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. Okay, you've got the floor. Hold on. You want to start with the short? We are spent 41% of the budget for the first five months. Pretty much on track. 90%. Was that includes all the taxes? Our bill, not 
So we're pretty much on track. Yes. Nothing was the yeah. Don't sell. Jim Barlow, and he was a little hesitant to um, take on Johnson because we have stitchel pain that can they may do the tax sales, and they are willing to do Johnson's. It's uh, a forward pleasure there. We do have to designate somebody to get a tax, take on the tax sales return. We're going to have a tax sale since 2019. The regular attorney. I need somebody. I think the deal wasn't the thinking that a regular attorney is pretty pricey relatively, and that for a more routine thing, you could use somebody less expensive. Is that why we didn't go to work? We haven't used, as long as I can remember, the town attorney has never been a tax bill attorney. I think it was historically a function of our previous attorney who did do tax sales. Uh, uh, and when we brought on Stitchell Page and Fletcher, we had an established relationship with somebody to do tax sales for us. So we just kept going with that. Uh, but now Angela is available anymore. So there's probably benefits and uh, to using either one or the other. One may be a cost factor. What would be well Jim is gonna charge his regular rate the same as sales. Okay. So there may not be a savings. And go with whoever wants to do it and when it's why don't we uh, formally Recognize that so Rosemary can find that. For a motion to authorize Rosemary to hire the tax attorney from our regular attorney firm to hire, yes, to use social engage as a tax attorney. Yes. Okay. Motion. We second. have a motion. We have a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, sing by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Actually, Greg, before you vote on the motion, uh, it's not Stitchell and Page, it's Stitchell, Page, and Fletcher. Stitchell, Page, and Fletcher. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I never say it. I never remember it. I, I think we're safe on, we know what we mean. Yes. Yeah. But. Okay. Go ahead, Roger. The only other thing it has is following the page. Okay. Historically, we've given town employees a hundred dollars holiday pay. What was the budget to approve one hundred dollar holiday pay for our employees? Motion. We have a second. Second. Second, second in discussion. Now, all those in favor, say by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's it. Anybody got any questions for Rosa? Uh, yeah. I, um, sorry, nope, I don't. It's not my business. No, never mind. Anyone else? Oh, thank you, Rosa. Uh, Brian, plan purchase. All right. So the only planning purposes we have is the playground equipment for the field. Uh, and it really got strapped down when you see it on the printed. Um, playground equipment for the field that we have asked for some additional posts for, and those are provided in your packet here. So, climbing structure. And it's prices that range between a uh, thousand and about three thousand, or a little over two thousand. And 
And we're proposing to make the purchase of the cheapest unit uh, from S3 stores. You could have printed that any smaller. Could you? Yeah, I apologize for that. That did not print very well. Those are all really tiny. That meets that meets the needs of the post responsible to play around it. Yeah. And then, okay. You know, the others are, are not exactly the same kind of unit, but we don't really think that we need anything all that fancy. You know, the structure there doesn't see tons of use. The school playground is next door. A lot more equipment and facilities, but we do get some benefit by having some playground equipment on these fields. And it does seem pretty, pretty regular light use. Do any concern or issues? Is that all the planned purchases? If we're working on uh, tire chains for the uh, greater, but we don't have the quote for them yet. Um, you know, we've asked we've asked a couple times for it now, and it, we haven't gotten the, the quote back yet. Buckle up a bit. That's pretty crazy. He gave us a rough pull of 1300, but he was looking and trying to find a vendor that had many in stock. Okay. Is that it, Brian? Yep, that's it. Okay, Jason, you have the power. Uh, no. But there's a 33 tree in the hospital in some. You say 33? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we've been doing the winter maintenance. And tall maintenance, all in the same thing. Big <laughs> weeks. Uh, and uh, we redid the floor in a break room. And uh, speak up, will you, Jason? Uh, we redid the floor in a break room. And then we've been working on the SDS sheets and stuff. I have one of the other guys working on the equipment. So the safety side of it brought up to what's in the shop part is uh, chemicals and stuff. What does the SDS stand for again? Uh, safety Attitude. Do we uh, utilize any of those trees to act after communities or anything like that? And usually, if they're on the landowners, you give it to them. What's theirs? In the past, we picked them up and then some people have wanted them back. Yep. We just leave them. They just push them off the road yeah. right away. Sue Levering tells us that the Emerald dashboard is in Belvedere now. So it's it's coming. Yeah. Keep plenty more trees. Keep your chains on yeah. the sure. Oh, yeah. okay. Jason, how's the uh, salt truck working out? Uh, it, it's working out pretty good. It's gone out the last four or five times with no big issues. There's a little pork thing working out. Uh, and probably next uh, Sunday. Let's get to see how it works. You know, when it's getting springs or? As soon as they get a spot open for us because they have to order them in anyway. So it's timing with everybody's so booked. We're trying yeah. to get things in. You probably haven't had a chance. I think we just talked about it late last week, but about uh, downsizing the hopper. I talked to Andy about that, and he, uh, we've used it, so kind of. Okay. Are they wondering moving the applicator, sander, auger? The they, actual center of the road. So that's did. one thing I saw. Yeah, they would Where's, honor. They're doing it. Well, uh, they they would honor moving it with a with a uh, quote to do, I guess, and it's about a foot and a half over. 
Uh, and I asked Andy if they credit our account. The five, because you said it was a five hundred fifty dollar option. So there you go, just credit on the account, and we just got the same. Let's go be weld over there. We've already got the shoot. Or maybe we just go weld up a couple pieces, and it's going to be moved over to the four feet where we wanted it. Yeah. What's the timing of that? The timing for the and shoot. How do we get moved over? Well, we would have had it moved over um, by now, but it's not. Uh, tomorrow we'll send the video out then. Okay. I was just wondering because it seems like it would save you time. Yes. Yeah, so it'll it'll save. Save. One of the two. Yeah, it'll save money in there. Don't worry, so it won't be spreading all those money. So, Mark's been trying to run it. I sent out the rope with 20 calendars in the car, so he doesn't have to solve the equation. Okay. Yeah, so it's just going to be one of those things. Yeah. The new employee on board yet? The 27th? Yep, he starts the 27th. He's coming in on Thursday to sign, you know, to finish up his you know, insurance and payroll and everything. Anything else? Okay. Okay. Any further questions? Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Honored with the presence of the <laughs> esteemed legislators tonight. Uh, you're not up until eight o'clock, so if you need to run out and get a bite to eat or something, but you're more involved in the stick around. We'll stick around. Uh, they just got here early, so they could think they could get out of here early, maybe. <laughs> Report from the Racial Justice Committee. Okay. A little bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah, we're very early. Didn't expect that. Um, so we just have a couple things to report on. Um, really one or two, I think. Um, at our last meeting, the RDC unanimously voted to cancel the written expression contest in its current iteration. We have had um, kind of not no weights on it. I think we think it was a combination of that poor timing, perhaps, with the school year and the summer program not being what, what it was expected to be, just a number of things. So we just wanted to let you know that we plan to revisit it at a later date, but as of now, we can the current iteration. Um, and let's see, um, it's kind of ties into the, the appointments too, but we, um, we don't have a formal recommendation for any of the, the appointees who have applied. Um, we were unable to review the candidates' letters um, prior to this meeting. So um, I guess other than our previous recommendation for Jackie Stan, um, we weren't able to make a formal recommendation for tonight's meeting. Um, and I think that's all as far as our reporting goes. Um, because then we have, oh no, then we, yeah, I'm sorry. And then we have our budget, <laughs> which is the next thing. I'll turn to Jeff for that. Yeah, because I'm a nerd and I like spreadsheets. Yeah. So I did that well. Um, so we included in our packet a, just a very simple spreadsheet with a breakdown of what we're hoping to spend. Um, we're hoping to bring kind of a nice combination of um, you know educational stuff, you know, workshops, seminars, whatever term you want to hang on it, but educational opportunities each year, as well as celebrations. Um, so we want to build on the Duke celebration, turn that into more of a community. Barbecue kind of situation, perhaps utilizing the, the pizza oven and things like that. Um, and so what we've done is essentially laid out what we think it'll cost to put each of those events on throughout the year. Uh, we're proposing to offset the cost of any trainings or seminars with grants, um, and similar to the one that we uh, won this year uh, to pay for the upcoming um, implicit bias trainings. And then we're going to do basically other kinds of Fundraising, whether it be passing a hat, um, doing something similar to the teacher drive that I've seen Spence has been doing, um, things like that to offset the cost of the other programs. So, our total expenditure that we're proposing is $2,300. The net that we would propose to spend from the town is the $825. Um, so, if we raise less money, then we do less. But that's what we're hoping to do this upcoming year. I'm fairly optimistic or uh, on your uh, grants. Mm -hmm. Any of those, uh, you know, you're pretty confident of? Or? 
Yeah, there are a number of small to medium grants like that for similar types of activities. Um, I don't think there's a limit, for example, on how many times we can win the rapid response grant um, that we've already gotten. Um, that we'll, we got an extension because of the, but we got it, that's within this fiscal year, but for next fiscal year, we can try that one again. There's some others out there. If we can't find one, then we'll either raise alternate funds or have to wait a year. Um, there's not one. Okay. Board members, got any questions on that question? You uh, did an outstanding job on the budget. Thank you. Uh, you started out with 2350, what you plan on spending, and you want to raise 1525, and you're only coming to the town for $825. I tell you, that is an excellent job, and your, your committee should be commended for that. Well said, Mike. Thank you. And you also provided a a calendar outlook. I guess that's a tentatively planned. Yeah, it kind of lays out things that hopefully don't cost money. So things that like what we've done this past year, public displays, including flags that are flown on the screen, um, and and things like that. So it's just kind of a rough kind of idea of what a fiscal year would look like. Okay. Good. Anything else? Any questions from board members? If not, well, we are moving tonight. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Nice job on that. I guess it's here now. Brian, if you want to give your report, you know, we can let Jason get out of here. Yeah. So, first up on, on my report is uh, proposed use of Brian on municipal roads. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> That's trying to work me up already. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we believe that using brine with no additives on our roads is going to uh, significantly reduce the amount of runoff that we're contributing by reducing the total amount of salt. And uh, when it's liquefied, the brine and the salt stick the road where we place it will end up with less salt bouncing off the road and ending up in the the, uh, the ditches and uh, watershed. Um, so it's a cost saving measure, works at lower temperatures, so we don't have to spread as much of it in preparation for a storm event. Um, I think that's kind of the big ones. It's, it will we'll use less salt and it'll cost less to the salt we use. The salt will be more effective uh, and we don't believe that it will have a significant impact on residents' vehicles because we're not using an additive. Um, you know, we think that that's a different property than uh, what we typically have associated with what the state's using. Any comment? Yeah. Jason, for her. No, I want in. I want in. Go ahead. Please, please, please. <laughs> no, I'm just going to add on what Brian said to that technically all it is just salt and water brought up to 23.3 parts. Uh, so, those are the numbers. And it pretty much, I mean, it does, what well, we're going to spread is what it does after it hits the snow anyway. It starts making the water that you see running. All that is what it is, just going to wet that down so it doesn't bounce. In. And it's uh, I'm not that shoot easier. And it gets applied together. Yeah, it sprays. It left, yeah, it's 30% of the salt turns what you get casted out, but it also uses less salt when you're doing it. You don't have to have as much salt to get it. When we put as much salt down that we do right now, we put it down so it starts that effect, that water, and it starts activating it. Now we won't have to have that to start the process. So that's what that's why I know Matt's chomping in with it. Well, that'll be good. But, uh, but no, it is. I went in and I talked to Jason about it. I was I've been prepared to just be stubborn about this and say no. Uh, but it's exactly the same chemical process that's happening with the brine process is what happens right now on our roads. It's just that they're churning up, they're making it into a, a liquid before they apply it to the roads, um, which prevents the rocks, the rock salt bouncing into the ditch and into the waterways and reduces the amount of rock salt that we need to use. So it's other um, 
places, municipalities and states use a different sort of formulation um, that has other additives in it that um, lower the melting temperature and, and stick to vehicles and stuff it just makes that corrosion process much uh, much worse but this is uh not a bad thing so i think we can make the motion and make it with no additives um and that i support this so you're gonna have to hold on to your chair everybody <laughs> uh you've all heard me go on about how i do not like brian because of the slush that it makes when it hits the road i have no problem with brian I agree with the additive part, but I don't have a problem when the rock salt is also going down because that's the texture that is the part that was missing in my whole experiences. So I'm not just a All right, we could be out of here right here. I, 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 I did not expect that. I know. It's I, the, your seat. I know. I mean, this is a significant savings too. Yeah. We're not yeah. like, I talked to Mark and he said 30%. And then I did my homework and I talked to Jason. I said, is it 30% salt savings or 30% cost? And then I went and did homework again. There a lot of the studies out there are talking 30% cost. Our salt budget's $42,000. So that's $12,600 we're talking about cheaper. And we've already been warned that our chloride budget is short, but I can't. It's better for the environment. It makes for safer roads and it's gonna save us 30% potentially. Well, that's high parts experience as well, I believe. That was in St. Albans and now St. John's where he's in the process of switching to it too. So it's not just a theoretical, it's we're seeing it in other budgets. Nothing's perfect, it's not. But it's, we're talking a big number, even if we don't hit that 30%. Yep. It's good. Yeah, and we've all seen big piles of salt in the road sometimes. From either equipment malfunction or something. You know, we're not going to have that. Uh, I think it's a win win situation. We're going to save in excess of $12,000. In theory, it shouldn't have Sorry, look. we shouldn't have that as much, no, because that's what happens sometimes that salt sticks to the shoe and sets there and it gets heavy enough and it drops off and you'll, you'll see. That's what you see. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. You got something else? I think it'd be good for not to make motion. <laughs> right. And back to second. Um, yeah, motion to uh, use uh, Brian uh, with uh, no items for our for our for the roads. Second. That motion is second. Good job converting. <laughs> Electric can change his <laughs> Any discussions? Oh. Thank oh. you. Nope, no. Nope. Keep running this guy. Not all of the favors in front of the seminar. Aye. Both. Great job. Thank you. Thanks. 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 All right. So, well, uh, we sent copies of the opioid settlement to our local partners, Dennis Promise and uh, Healthy Little Oil Valley. Uh, they came back that they had no no specific comments on 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 the settlement. Um, I've got the same from other people that have been asked. So I recommend that we participate in the settlement. I don't think there's a lot that we're going to gain from this. Um, I think that most of the money is probably going to be taken up by the state's attorney and used for uh, statewide opioid efforts. But if the state's attorney tells us that they can get a bigger piece of the settlement if they have us signed on, uh, that we would get otherwise, I think that is the best we're going to do. Uh, we have a motion to join in. One we have a second. Any further discussion? Just that I mean, my only ask, Brian, is that you don't spend a lot of if any time on this. Yeah. Uh, There's just a part where 
the last page, we have to register our subdivision or national. We have to register on the website. So. Yeah, I, I, to the best of my knowledge, that's the last they're going to ask of us. Any downside for applying? Uh, we would, by signing in to, for this settlement, we might not be eligible for future settlements. But by not taking the settlement, there might not be any future settlement to take part in. So, given that we have virtually nothing invested in it, uh, taking what's available now seems like our, our likely best option. So we have a motion on the floor and a second joining in on settlement. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor signify saying aye. 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 Oh, racial justice committee appointments. We have right. got copies of the four applicants. Let's see it. I just have a little connection to my I just wanted to advocate for um for an idea that um given that there are so many qualified, extremely qualified candidates who put their names forward, um just a, a thought um given that Adele McDowell will be going to college um in the summer and can mitigate kind of changes of the guard, so to speak. Um if if we could move, move beyond the six members only and perhaps add a seventh membership for Adele McDowell, who we know is only going to be here for a certain amount of time. Um, and again, given that there's so many qualified um, candidates, it's just a thought, perhaps. That speaks to what I've been seeing a long time, whether it's seven or five, have an odd number, but yes. I didn't mean that. Before, but maybe now. <laughs> okay, we, we do have that input from the Racial Justice Committee Chair, anyhow. Um, how would the board like to proceed? We could make the appointments tonight, we can defer them, we can ask the Racial Justice Committee to interview them. What is the board's pleasure? On that particular suggestion, if I may, um, so yeah, I, uh, I'd be persuaded by that. Um, perhaps more if um, the committee was to come up with some ground rules. Um, and I, I know, you know, since the meeting that I attended that, that when by all counts, everything's, um, the meetings are much different and you're running a really good meeting and, and, and there's really productive conversation. Um, but as board members turn over and people lose that experience, um, I'd really like to see that um, embedded in the system of the of the committee things like, you know not the little other people and uh, not assuming worst intentions or motivations of other people those sorts of things that are very very common in, in uh, social justice uh, groups mm -hmm. so that would be my my strong recommendation for that another board member Any thoughts how do you want to see? It's too bad we didn't have the other three candidates here this evening. We only got one. Well, to fairness, all fairness to the candidates, they were not uh, encouraged in any way to attend. Really? Okay. That's kind of odd. No, that's how we. It's no different than a. That's true. Yeah. But it'd be nice to ask them a question. It is what it is. If the board wants to proceed with making the appointments, we can do it as a slate for the two, or I think we should keep with the two because everybody's expecting it to be a six, and maybe it would possibly change the dynamics of it if it was going to be a larger board, possibly. It is a good point, you know, having a seven member board, but I think we should stick with six this evening. Is there any uh, suggestions on how to proceed? Does anybody want to uh, make any appointments tonight? Well, I, for one, I think it's very great, it's very good that a young person is interested in being on board. You know, it's uh, 
we have a lot of uh, older people, and I'm not picking on older people because I look at one every time I, I look in the mirror. Uh, but, you know, it's good to see younger people interested in what goes on. So I guess I could support Adele, McDowell, and change Spence. And I would make that motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. This is a second. I'll make that second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to appoint Adele and Shane. Is there any discussion? Yeah, um, on one thing about Shane is that he's on the family commission. Um, and I, I, one thing that's interesting in this process is to look at um, racial justice issues that are um, that other towns in Vermont are facing, um, especially even here in Lamar County. And, in Stowe, there's a really interesting thing happening right now, and it has to do with planning commissions and development review boards. And, and um, I think it's really insightful to kind of study what's going on there and to see what lessons we might be able to apply um, locally, you know, here at Johnson. So I think that's a really great connection to make. And Shane's, you know, Shane's, Shane's. Um, yeah, I guess I just I wanted to um, I wondered if, if if it would be possible for the committee to be able to at least you know be able to see the applicant letters prior to an appointment. I think it's it's valid for the committee to be able to have discussion around around appointments. Those letters were not shared with the committee. The letters were not shared in it in advance, no. Uh, didn't we all receive the letters? We did see them before our December 2nd meeting. We they sent they got sent, I think, December. Oh, so you have seen them? We have seen them at, at this point, but we haven't had a chance as a committee okay. to discuss the following. Okay. Yeah. Any further comment? Is the board prepared to vote? Seeing any, all those in favor, seem to say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations to Adele and Thank you. Uh, Jim Alexander, welcome, sir. Page one. And if you want me to. Um, so you see what we've expended so far. Again, just to review, we have. Uh, Approved expenditure up to forty five thousand for this uh, phase one, which is uh, which has been completed. Um, we have spent so far forty two thousand seven hundred fifteen dollars and seven and forty nine cents. Um, and there's an invoice from Howard Outstanding for um, lumber a faucet. LW wise broad that he paid for on his own and a laborer that he paid on his own. Uh, well, it's his, his own labor. Um, so um, I'm resolute and you know I, we, I told you that I this would cost forty five thousand dollars or less. Um, I, I I want to stick to that. Um, the, so here's where we're at. I mean we, we I think these expenses of lumber costs at LWI, well, the ride and the laborer are hard expenses that we need to pay out. Um, the $3,600 is, is Howard's labor that wasn't agreed to beforehand. Um, I know he worked real hard on it, and um, so he's asking for compensation after the fact, which um, that's what's before us now. So to clean up the whole phase one, this is what is a million, and then you have the un paid to date. So if we were to act on both of these, phase one would be confirmed. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the board's pleasure? We have some unpaid uh, the lumber and the faucet and the welding are on it. Anything that Howard had out of pocket needs to be paid to square up. 
that put us at $44,388 and some change. There's only $612 left till we get to full project cost of 45,000. There was an additional thousand dollars contributed, but that wasn't allocated. I'm also confused why there's a roofing material number two invoice on this, but it looks like that's already been paid. Some material was stolen from a contractor site. So the town's expected to pay for that. Yeah, I have questions about that myself. I know in construction, when you take the contract, the project area is yours and you're responsible for material and everything there. Seems like you, you should think that, but it's already out the door. Yeah. It just would have afforded more, you know, $740 more room to spare. If somebody was building a house and material was stolen, I wouldn't expect you to do it. In this case, who would you consider to be the, uh, the contractor? Person building the structure. Would you consider us as the uh, main contractor, subcontractor? I wouldn't in this scenario, no. Okay. Like I said, it's already been spent, so we can't really, maybe I'm beating a dead horse here. I motion to reimburse Howard for a lumber expense of $100. Uh, as well as a faucet expense from Howard Romero for $53.08, as well as $60 uh, from LWI for welded rod, rod um, as well as $1,560 for the additional labor item. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? If I can offer a little bit of clarity of conversation I had with Howard uh, the other day. Um, it is it is definitely true that Howard's labor was not included in the budget that was submitted to the board. Um, but the characterization that Howard is That this is a new expense or a new thing that Howard has added isn't exactly true either. Um, it was something that Howard had told us he expected to be paid for his work uh, as a uh, site manager for for the project. But it's also true that he didn't actually include that in the budget. So it's so it was in none of the budgets that we were approving. Oh, right. Well, so there was so it case. is an unapproved expense, uh, but I, I just wanted to help him a little bit with the characterization that it's not that he changed his mind or came up with it later. It's that it was omitted from the budget. So it it is an unapproved expense, and Howard wrote the budget, uh, but it, it was. Always, he had always intended that to be part of it. It just wasn't in what he presented and was voted on. There's a difference between intention and yep. approval. And even like I wasn't aware of that. I don't recall ever hearing about it. Um, on the board, I don't mean me, I mean the board. I mean, what's, what's the board's thoughts? We got. We Roughly want... speaking, six hundred and twelve dollars left until we need full budget without being a cost. Five hundred dollars. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. We could pay Howard that amount. That's all that's left. As I recall, he was asked early on if this was out of the goodness of his heart or it was going to be on the clock and. Uh, Never really got much of an answer, as I recall. So I remember he, when he submitted the bill, he asked if he could come in and justify it. 
to the board. We, we didn't outright say we're not going to pay him, but he was supposed to come to the board and between his case. Well, we had also told him that we would only hear that after we had closed out every other expense for that. So. That was late in doing that. Yeah, that was. was. After we got the, the invoice. Um, you know, I don't really remember if this was approved while I was in work, the whole project. So what I may, said may not have been true. I just don't recall. You were not around early on when we were yeah. talking to him about this. So. So there is a motion on the floor. Close out everything that's presented unpaid with the exception of how it's labor. We'll discuss. Do we need the motion to remain here? The funds go into the phase two. We already have a motion with a oh. second on the floor. Yeah, I'm just asking, I guess. Sorry. Different yeah. discussion. Well, let this first one go through. Yeah. Let's get this going. Those funds are here large for this project. So they will automatically go to phase two. Sense of getting more discussion. All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You guys have it? With the uh, outstanding power of labor issue, is there anything the board would like to act on there? Ask them to come in. I'd like to make a motion to pay Howard Romero $511.43 um, for his time and thank him for his effort. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? A second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? And that would take out, take us up to the 45 budgeted number, correct? Yes. Further discussion, all those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, uh, phase two. Um, should I go there too? Sure. Um, phase two, you got the, I sent the email from last time, from two weeks ago, you'd asked me to get clarity on the electrical. Given and you also gave me to go ahead to start a what do you call it a fund drive or a campaign drive to fund the remaining. Um, so in that time, I have with the village with Will um, confirmed that the village is donating or contributing the labor for primary electric at um, no charge. Uh, materials they're providing. At cost, so the quoted number will go down. I've asked for a requote on that from Troy. He hasn't gotten a chance to, to get back to me on that yet, but that'll be coming. It'll be at least fifteen hundred dollars savings. That's fifteen hundred dollars just in labor and I don't know material markup. Sorry, um, I met with an electrician down there last Thursday. Um, we talked about getting the secondary in. And that's basically. Sockets and lights. Uh, and he said that he'd be getting a quote uh, only by the end of this week, which um, it's holiday week, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, that's where we're at. I also reached out to the Alexander family. Um, they're definitely in for the Trump Loy, for funding of the Trump Loy, and potentially more that they want some more detail. Uh, he also wanted to get a little more. Um, information on exactly what the current plan for the Trump floor is. Um, but he's in for that. So that, that those conversations are ongoing. I don't think I have anything for the board to act on tonight, but I wanted to give you that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, uh, we really are very right along. Yeah, you know, go on. Right. With the board's consent, I'd like to rearrange the agenda. The worst of this type of society wanted to be here tonight, but I told them not to show up till 8 30. Thanks for so jumping to your financial security. Sure. 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 Sure.
what the legislators go. Yeah, I was going to say they're all here. It's well, always warm. Are they going to be very young? If the board has been consent, okay. Well, well, welcome, guys, tonight for coming out. Thank you for coming out. Uh, this is something we just try to do every year. Just have a little chat with you guys before the legislative session begins. What do you think on the horizon for us? As well as tonight, we've invited the president of the college to come down and to give us a little talk on what's going on up on the hill, as well as you may want to hear what you guys are going to do. Because sometimes what works for one of us works for both of us. And I think the college. Has always been recognized as a huge asset for this town. So you want to make that a place. So, what do you want to say is happening in a couple of weeks? So, uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, right. um, thanks for having us. Um, really interested in where concerns you may have at state government that would uh, help help the town, help the municipality here. Uh, as we go back into the session. So I'd be interested in, in that information as well. Um, hope we go back in person, um, still getting, you know, they're still trying to come up with how we're gonna be back. Um, so, you know, last year we were over Zoom the whole time. So definitely interested in getting back in the building in person into committee work. So I'm on the Human Services Committee, you'll probably know that. So a lot of the work I do is around um, Department of Health, Department of Children and Families and um, Department of Aging and Independent Living. So, looking at the issues that affect that, um, are you interested in what bills I'm working on this session? Or, um, you know, obviously around um, making sure the college is is strong and, and adequately funded is, is definitely high on the priority list. That would not be in my committee work, but um, you know, definitely. Any opportunity I get, um, you know, I've had some recent discussions around what's going to happen up at Green River Reservoir. So interested in, in making sure that we still have um, skate park there as well as power generation. You know, how do we find that balance around the, the licensing that's going on right now? Um, as far as some legislation, uh, working on some Medicaid savings stuff. So helping uh, older Vermonters who kind of fall into this donut hole of uh, eligibility for health insurance um, right now. Um, it's really low. Um, it's 100% of poverty. So looking at um, raising that up a little bit, it's something that's going to be a recommendation to Green Mountain Care Board and um, just trying to figure out how to help older Vermonters have access to health care so that they don't end up, um, you know, end up at the up at Copy hospital with no money or um, so anyways, um, yeah, uh, two bills that uh, I worked on last session that are in the Senate, the past house were the Office of the Child Advocate, which looks at youth in state custody and making sure we have systems in place so that they have the um, best shot at the transfer, transitioning to adulthood successfully. And then uh, I also have a bill looking at our reimbursement rates for home and community-based providers. So these would be like home health and how um, the DAs are reimbursed. As you probably know, like you've heard a lot of our um, residential care facilities and um, in-home care, the reimbursement rates are really low. We've had a lot of problems finding um, help. So, you know, it's, uh, it's basically looking at those rates and figuring out how we can make sure that they're competitive being able to hire people so that people who receive uh, in-home care uh, as they age here in Vermont. So I'm interested in what you what you're looking for, but <laughs> I, I think it would probably be important to hear from the um, um, president of college. Or, you know, well, if Dan's done, you know, <laughs> Dan's going to take, Dan's gonna take, Dan's gonna take a question. Dan's going to take a question. Dan's going to take a question. Uh, Dan, we talked about this uh, numerous times about the inspection laws in the state yeah. of Vermont, and uh, it's absolutely ridiculous when you buy a, a brand new car and its frame is full of holes already, because those were the factory holes, but you get one extra hole there, it's a rust hole, bang, you can't get your car or your truck inspected. Now, the state is full of certified welders, 
There's absolutely no reason that they couldn't cut that little rust hole out and put a little piece of metal the same thickness and weld it in and get it inspected. So the state needs to straighten that out because there's a lot of people in the state of Vermont that, you know, they talk about disadvantaged people. You have a lot of disadvantaged people on the road that, that can't afford brand new cars and everything else. And if they could get them inspected properly and welded, they wouldn't be driving them on the road about way to fall apart. So it'd be a win-win situation for everybody. So I heard you and I have legislation drafted and um, I'll be putting in this session around Outstanding. inspection stickers and vehicle inspections. So uh, one of the things is to look at doing it every other year uh, and also to really um, try to find um, what's what's going to make it so that people can afford to have cars here in Vermont and, and what we're just talking about, welding frames. You know, I had someone call me who had 500 miles on a set of brakes due to COVID. They weren't driving. They had them replaced. You get an inspection sticker, year passed. Um, they went back to get their inspection sticker and they said they need brakes again. She's like, I didn't drive more than 500 miles. It says it right on my sticker, what the mileage was. So anyways, yes. Thank you very much. Glad to share the bill with you once I uh, have a final draft. Outstanding. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate your help. Good job to make him happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something that's very important for everybody. Yeah. It's not only a safety issue, but it's a, mo a money issue for a lot of people, too. You know, so. No doubt. So, why don't we yield the floor? Can I just ask a question? Oh, <laughs> 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 Dan, the Office of the Child Advocate, what is the bill for that you're talking about? So, it cre uh, creates the Office of the Child Advocate. Uh, uh, so, so, right now in Vermont, or, um, we do not have that position. I gotcha. So um, I'm with you and I fully support you in that. Yeah. We have some families that are desperate. We have kids in our community right here in Johnson that desperately need that. So that's mm -hmm. great. No doubt. Okay, Dan is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> dumb at night. Thank you. <laughs> President? Yeah, thank you. Uh, again, for those of you who don't know me, my name is John Mills. I'm the interim president at NBU. I come here from <coughs> a long career in higher ed. As my brother said, I never had a job as in higher ed from the day I got out of school. And um, I've been a president to our colleges, so I've got a little bit of street cred and experience in that area. And I came here because um, I've been involved in transformation work in another state. And I'll just make a statement and go on from there that <clears throat> the way that Vermont is doing it is the best way I think in the country right now. It's going to have a lot of bumps and bruises along the way, but it is the best way for this to be done because it's involving everybody in the community of the institution. And we've got over 85 faculty, for example, involved in transformation work, doing that work on their extra time. And that just gives you an <clears throat> example of um, the, what's going on across the state at all the institutions. So with that being said, um, last week I was here and I mentioned about um, the, my commitment and I think the commitment going forward for NBU as it exists before it becomes Vermont State University is uh, we have to raise our vote. We have to do as much as we can to get more students and get more um, revenue into the institution. And that can only uh, be successful if we raise all the votes around us. So as I mentioned at the meeting, I'm fully engaged in working with this community as much as possible to advance some of the um, economic and development aspects of the area. I'll give you one <coughs> small idiosyncratic thing. I, um, probably all of you have heard of Paul Seuss College in the Adirondacks. I also apologize as president there for 11 years. I'm an outdoor environmental advocate. Um, and uh, I found out about the Babcock up in Eden, and I didn't know about that. That's a phenomenal opportunity for us. We let it lie fallow for about five years, and my goal is to rejuvenate that. I'm looking for funds to get us going this summer with new internships and new um, uh, <clears throat> ability for a student or faculty level student to be involved, and I found that's one at this point. So, um, <clears throat> go other places. 
And um, <clears throat> so we'll, uh, and that's just an example of what we're trying to do. I'm also fully engaged with improving the distance because it's a fine enough center of great renown. And I think we've got to use it more in the community. Um, <clears throat> and so those, those are the things we're trying to do. I'll give you some good news. Our um, applications and acceptances for um, the spring are above goal, significantly above goal for, for 2019, not 2020, and when all this hit, but 2019. That's a good sign. You don't count until the heads are in the beds, but it's looking good. And the fall applications, well, way too early to say you're going to get them all, but we're almost 50% ahead of where we were two years ago. Because we've tried some new ways to reach out to students. <clears throat> and um, happily, it's not as much as I want. Some of that growth is coming from the Vermont State resident students. Now, during the cutbacks that uh, occurred because of scaring of people that were closing, the major loss at the institution was Vermont State residents. We didn't lose any other state. As a matter of fact, our state actually grew slightly in that time. And so the commitment from the legislature is we got to serve all Vermonters. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying, trying to find new ways to get to students and to parents to understand we're here to stay. Act 74 says we're here to stay. And everybody needs to know that. You know, when <clears throat> they announced there might be closures, every newspaper and TV station had a microphone in some of the states asking about it. And then when they passed Act 74 and said we hit the state, there wasn't any news at all. It was like, oh, who cares? Well, we all, of course, care. So that's very important to know, and we're fully committed. We need you know, more revenue. We need more state support. I'll be perfectly blunt. One of the scary things when I was looking to come here was on a per-student basis, this state is 49th in the nation. The student support in higher education. And here's the problem there's no 50s. We're tied with another state 49. That has to change in the state that requires higher education to drive this economy. So I'll be lobbying as hard as I can on that issue going forward. But we have some good news. Like I said, the moment is positive, and we've got some real traction. The VSU uh, transformation, which won't be complete until. July of 23 um, is going along. It's very, very difficult. I'll just give you one nightmare example. You've got NVU, Castleton, and Vermont Tech, and not one school has the same caliber. And that's both on a yearly, monthly, and daily calendar. It's unbelievable nightmare. And uh, so, but well, we've got people doing it. And we'll get it done, but oh, imagine straight that out. Several hundred courses that have to be combined and have the same day, same time, um, same length. And that is not common in the system. So uh, it's, it's a tough job, but it'll get better. So, anyway, that's where we're going. Um, last week, um, I was a little bit more optimistic about what we're, we're doing. As you know, I'm not as optimistic today because of the COVID problem. And we spent half of the morning this morning on Zoom calls with different scenarios. I'm new, I had to learn how we transformed back in 2020. Um, and tomorrow morning there's a big meeting with the um, Department of Health to get their input. With, with, uh, both all of the uh, state and independent colleges are meeting with Vermont Health tomorrow morning to find out what their guidance is and where we're going. It's an extremely delicate and difficult situation. If you would see the newspaper, you'd see who's already shutting down, who's going to delayed openings. And a delayed opening or any reduction in what we did for the last you know, semesters is an economic blow to where we're located. And we just want to try to find ways to get around it, but it's scary right now and, and what could happen. So um, it's a challenge. And as you know, the outbreaks, the spread comes when people go home. So we had a burst of infections after Thanksgiving. We had an October break, a burst of infections. No matter what we do, we know when the students come back, we're going to have another round of challenges. So um, it's going to be um, 
difficult time until we can get this um, pandemic or what looks like an endemic under control. So that's uh, the elevated speech, but it's obviously a big plus for an building like this. So um, I'll take any questions. Do have a question? Or people from the audience or public? Are you working with Commissioner Hurley at all on economic development? No, I'm not. You're not. You don't know if anyone at the school. Hmm? You don't know if anyone within the state system working with. Not, I, again, in the Chancellor's office, I wouldn't know. Okay. Uh, maybe. Um, but um, I am not my direction to Yes. Okay. Uh, I think it's two parts, but I'm really glad to hear you talk about that. I talked about outdoor ed. I'm the one that just ranked for my friends that the uh, focus of outdoor ed has really gone to live in. And so I think bringing that back is really super important. I know the majority of my friends went through that program and it was really beneficial. Um, so my question. Is when this client made the campuses, do we foresee certain campuses having certain purposes? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we're working on that now, and I'll give you a perfect example. One of the things about the BSU is the teaching model, which is going to be it's called for want of a better term, face to face plus. Okay. What that means is we're going to try and do as much face to face, but every program will have hybrid classes, synchronous and asynchronous, so people can take courses or majors and not physically necessarily be there. And I'll give you an example. Uh, don't write it down, it's not done yet. But here's a perfect example. You have gases in that school. We don't. We've got atmospheric sciences. They don't. A student who wants to do atmospheric sciences, but is a good football player, could come to Cassis and be there to all their gen eds, play football, and then take the classes, the hybrid face-to-face -face classes in the atmospheric sciences during their time. So that, that's the, the model. Okay. And we're doing that right now. Uh, yeah. One of the, I, it was on WCAX, we teach a, a differential equations mm -hmm. at Johnson. Now, I've been, I'm a scientist, I took different cues. Not many people want to take different cues, right? So we only had four students here taking it. That's not enough to run the class. But we went to the hybrid format, synchronous live, and we ended up with 11 students. We needed 10, Castleton and BTC, and we ran the course that way. So that's also going to be an event mm -hmm. that we'll be able to deliver courses that technically we might have to shut down because of enrollment, and now we'll be able to expand it. Sure, we'll get back to you, Bill. Uh, why don't I give Kate and Richie an opportunity to say a few words? Sure. Um, I'll just quickly add that I'm Kate Donnelly with the state rest for this area. I'm just curious, um, since you're here, in addition to, um, you know, obviously just more funding, is there anything in particular that would be helpful for us to know going, going back into session that would be helpful for you all in, in what you're doing? Well, those critical need scholarships were phenomenal. And we need them again because they don't dry up. And we filled up our mental health counseling program overnight when we allowed that uh, scholarship to go into effect for that graduate program. And of course, we need it for nurses. There's still not enough money uh, for the nurses. And the other thing that has to be done on those health care programs is find ways to get clinical sites. Because we can have more nurses in training, but we can't. We have the capacity to deliver the basic program, but we don't have the places to put it because of the accreditation. So we need more clinical sites. Um, and, and so that's a challenge. And we need the, the other challenge, um, which uh, it is just national. I don't want to interrupt you, but you know, we tried from the legislature to put money into nursing. And we, um, we've been, um, and the state colleges have been slow to get off the mark on um, university programs, and they've been extremely slow. Now, what do you mean by slow to get off the mark? 
Well, you're new here. And um, we put money uh, five years ago, we put money three years ago into trying to um, develop the nursing programs, and there aren't enough people out there teaching. And the state colleges have been slow to come to the legislature and ask for the real plan to put together for nursing programs. That's one. Um, but I'm I will, little, I, you I'm, and I will have to discuss well, that. I, I don't agree with that assessment. Well, you might, um, you yes, might not have your point of view in, in, in that, but I'm just telling you. And um, I've been around a little while in the legislature, not, not very long um, compared to what um, you, but, you know, you haven't come up with plans that are concrete for the legislature to fund to do that. You are very correct when you say that um, we have been low in our per pupil um, contribution to the state colleges. But over the last two years, we put well over 100 million to bail the state colleges in that. And the state and college system has to be relevant. And a piece of that is you have to be able to move and give us concrete things to do in the legislature. Well, I mean, I, this could go on all night because I think you can hear me concretely. And bailing out is because the legislature allowed holes to develop that were beyond normal. I, 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 um, I don't disagree with you. Uh, but um, the last two years during COVID, we've been um, very supportive of the state college. I don't deny that. It doesn't even make up for 10 years of the year. Well, well, we could have, we could talk about that no, um, a lot. Of that. I think there's going to be opportunities for you guys to talk. <laughs> well, I, I, I'd like to talk to you, and I'd like to hear what they've got to say. And it's nice to meet you. Same thing. Rich is on appropriations, in case you can guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would just like to say one thing about the programs that you guys are talking about, the critical needs scholarships, is my daughter is a 2020 graduate and has, not because she wouldn't have the financial support, but the scholarships that are out there that are supporting her taking classes that help her with her daycare, which is one of our critical need areas, she's all over taking those classes. And this is not a motive, this is, my daughter is not a heavy motivated get your education kind of kid. Um, but she's jumping on them. And that's really a big deal because I'm not so sure she would be if those weren't out there. Um, so I, that critical need, those critical need areas, we should keep funding them because they're being used. Thank you. That's that's just the kind of feedback mm -hmm. we need. So Kate and Richard, yeah. do you guys want to can maybe Raven has a she just raised her hand? I just wanted to comment on that, that I don't there's a lack of teachers and I have recently had two co-workers receive their teaching certificates and are working to receive their teaching licenses because of that. Um, something that they would otherwise have not had all been able to do because they're working moms that work in education and we don't make a lot for any of the kids. We don't make a lot of money. So without the scholarship, we Thanks for thanks for taking the time to answer that question. Um, I'm happy to go. Is that right? Um, yeah. So um, yeah, when I think about the upcoming session, I guess I've been sort of stepping back and and kind of looking at it um, from bird's eye view and. I think it's going to be a really intense one. And I know I'm new to this, but I feel like we've got pensions, we've got we've got the uh, reportionment, um, we've got um, actually Prop 5, we've got um, a lot going on in terms of like looking at like health care, um, we've got more of the child care bill. I mean, I think there's just a lot of issues in just about every committee I can think of has something coming through that is, is big and charged and um, 
is really activating to a lot of people in our state on, on all sides of the political spectrum. Um, so, you know, being here in the community, and I, I appreciate you guys inviting us here. Um, I guess what's been on my mind is, you know, and this is you know, maybe a social worker, and we just wanted to sort of put this out into the air. Of, we're going to be having a lot of really hard conversations over the next six months. Um, and, you know, that some of that takes place in Montpelier, but we're here representing our communities. And um, so I just keep thinking about, you know, how do we, how do we navigate these times together? How do we have these really hard conversations on a wide variety of issues and, and figure out how to move forward as a community? Um, and that's yet to be seen. But um, from where I sit, I'm here and available. People want to connect. Um, always open to hearing people's perspectives. Um, on the Judiciary Committee, uh, I don't actually. We haven't been meeting, some, some committees meet, but, you know, me and then we haven't, um, so I'm not uh, super abreast of, of some of the bills that are being coming right out. I know that one that carried over from last year that's particularly, well, became politically complicated um, and is likely to remain that way is uh, looking at expungements. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think it will likely be referred to as uh, sealing, is what we'll be looking at. But expungements are sealing, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think that's going to be one of the, the bills coming out um, initially. Um, I think I'll, I'll pause there for now. I can't think of anything at the moment. Um, but as Dan said, also, I'm just really just curious to hear from you guys if there's anything I feel like just sort of listening to right now and want to hear what you guys have on the top of your minds. I missed some of your words. You said stealing? Sealing. Sealing. So oh, there's, there's oh, sealing. 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 That's S E A L. Yeah. I thought you said something about stealing, you know. Oh. With your yeah. mask on, and I, yeah. I don't have my hearing aids in. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Tell you, you're stealing. Yeah, so essentially, and I'll just do a super brief explanation. Expungement, as it currently exists, eliminates a person's record entirely. It vanishes. There's no, it's gone. No one can access it ever again. Sealing, the record exists, but it is restricted in terms of who can have access to it. Right now, law enforcement, if you have a record that's sealed, it might not pop up on a, a job application, but law enforcement can still access it, which we know can create complications for equity reasons, many other issues. There's a push to move towards sealing so that the record doesn't get eliminated. It still exists, whether some people advocate for it so that it can be accessed for research purposes, some people advocate for it because they're concerned if that person commits a crime in the future, they want to have access to that file, which sort of gets back to the issue to begin with of whether that should happen or not. We don't have to get into all of it now. But essentially, it's moving more in the direction of sealing as opposed to expungement. And the focus would be then on, well, then who can see it and why. Um, but it feels like moving in that direction, some people feel it creates more of an opportunity for compromise and coming together around a policy that could work for folks involved. I agree with you. Some kid, uh, you know, his first year of college, he might get kicked out of a dorm and try to get back in, and then he's uh, arrested for trespass or something, and then it follows him around the rest of his life. I mean, something like that should be totally taken away, as far as I'm concerned. But how does it, how does it, they do it? Because usually once it's in some database somewhere, it's almost impossible to get rid of it. So. These are some of the questions they're having. It's looking at, you know, administratively even what's involved and what's simpler so that it's not taxing our systems from an administrative perspective. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific yep. type of record that you're looking at or is this across the board um, there's really specific uh, crimes I would have to look at I mean it, it's pretty wonky 
Um, so it would have to be, as, as the policy was, like a certain amount of time would have to pass. It was like a significant period of time. I think it was 10 years or more. I can't remember without a reoccurrence of, of crime. Um, and it was very specific crimes. So this is another reason that some advocates feel like moving towards stealing could be an improvement because some feel like then they might actually be willing to expand the list of crimes that would be folded in, whereas it would expand that there's not much of an appetite currently to um, include some of the more intensive crimes. Okay, well, we let Richie have a chance to tell us what his plans are. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say follow um a lot of what um Kate just talked about. Um I'm not hopeful that this year is gonna be a year where we're gonna deal with a lot of um um structural problems within state government, um, particularly from the Senate. And I'm looking at um in the Senate three congressional candidates. Um, at least a couple of people thinking of running for lieutenant governor. I think it's going to cloud us to get um, um, work done on, and, you know, being an election year on um, the retirement issues, because the retirement issues are really um, um, the looming issue that's out there that will cripple us if we can't um, deal with those retirement issues. Um, that you know, it, we the problem is so huge, and the longer we wait to come up with really hard um, answers to this, the uh, harder it's going to be. Um, I think that there are um, fundamentally people are living longer, and state. Um, state employees and teachers are living longer. The average teacher now um, lives <clears throat> into their late 80s, and female teachers are now living to their early 90, and males uh, are about 88. And they never built a system that expected people to do that. And we I have to sit down and we have to come to grips with what the, um, what the issues are. And it's going to take give and take across the board um, from state employees, and but there's going to have to be a lot of revenue go in uh, and teachers that, that we're going to have, there's going to have to be a lot of give and take. And I'm not sure <clears throat> in a place where there's this turmoil going around with people running statewide and all of it, that we're gonna be able to buckle down and find the real answers to things like the um, retirement um, plan problem. My number one issue is, um, is I think the number one issue that this community has said for the last two years, particularly the last two years, and you could see it when we had the protests on the street, when um, the State College Board um, talked about closing campuses. And my number one issue is to make sure that the resources that the state colleges need to fundamentally change um, what they do <coughs> to make them relevant, I want to be there to help fund as much of that as we can. Um, our underlying um, single appropriation for per student is low, but through COVID, we've done a really good job, I think, at eliminating um, um, a lot of the debt of the system. So there's an opportunity if we can come out of this with um, a state college system that is relevant and supportive of um, students, they'll do fine. Yeah. And I think they need to do fine because um, people like me wouldn't have gone to college if this campus wasn't there. And um, so I think the state college for me and making sure that the state college system is healthy 
is um, at the top of my list on appropriations. My afternoon committee is, um, is natural resources and um, with all of the work on the infrastructure bills um, in Congress, um, we will be dividing up that money and how that gets spent. And um, so um, there'll be a lot of work to do around that in the natural resources area. And that's where um, I will spend um, a lot of time. Um, I would just, I want to relay um, one instance. Um, I think now it was four years ago, we put five and a half million dollars in the budget to educate um, mental health workers, most of which um, went to the campus here at Johnson because the um, program on the campus has been very um, um, successful in graduating um, um, students with bachelor's degrees. So we put five and a half million because all of our mental health, health agencies are starved for people to be able to move on and the turnover rate in our mental health agencies has been, you know, ours here in Lemoyle has been as high in the last two to three years as 26% turnover per year. So we put five and a half million dollars in the budget and the state colleges tried to corner the money um, to um, make sure that those students that were presently working for um, mental health agencies that were trying to move on to get a master's degree, um, they um, tried to corner the five and a half million dollars. The um, association that represents the mental health agency surveyed all of the students that were going on to school to get their master's degree working, um, working during the day at the mental health agency, going on, taking care of their families, and then trying to go to school in the evening. And those, the Association for the Mental Health Workers, um, and Julie Kessler, who was um, um, the person that represents them, lobbies for the mental health agencies in the legislature, um, came to us and said that over half of the students that were going taking online classes at Southern Indiana University. And that the reason they were doing that is they couldn't find online classes that would allow them to work a day of work and um, take care of their kids and feed their kids in the evening and then take online classes. Well, it pretty much ended any thought of us cornering the money to go to the state college system because the people that we were trying to help was the mental health workers helping them move on to um, do a better job of what they wanted to do. And so that money got dispersed in a different way. And no one tried to corner the money to go to the state colleges. We have to make sure that the state college system comes out of this COVID um, disaster that we're in, in um, a good place, and we've reformed what is happening here. So um, the system is relevant for the students around and relevant in a way that helps Vermont produce the mental health workers and the nurses and the, um, the people that we need um, to go on because there's a lot of um, students here that are, grew up just like me, that without the state college system, um, their lives will be diminished. Thank you, guys. Um, at this point, I'll open up to any board members that have questions for any of the legislators or the president. I will just note that 
the reapportionment goes through as it was presented, all three of you won't even represent us. I doubt it'll be that way. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I do have a couple things that are definitely on my mind. Evan touched on it earlier. We all talk about it all the time, which are both the impact of inflation on the town of Johnson um, and our cost of materials that are just skyrocketing. So, um, if the state wants to ask how they can help towns, I would say always money helps. And uh, but raw materials in particular, sand, salt, gravel, uh, that kind of stuff, um, to help supplement some of those costs would be very much appreciated. <clears throat> Taking notes on my phone, by the way, just so yeah. you know. I'm not going to say as your Kate's going to pull into the salt shed tomorrow. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to send him an order. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Uh, inflation on materials as a whole is big. And salaries. We're starting to see the worker shortage here in this community. And uh, if you're familiar with the village, has been they can't even get people to apply for their village manager position. Um, we put out an opening for a highway employee operator. Uh, we were getting applicants that didn't even have a CDL license. Uh, we finally nabbed one, but uh, it was, it's nowhere near like it used to be. We used to have a huge pool of candidates. On top of what we're now paying, it's, we had to give significant increases. We lost an employee who went to one of the local oil companies delivering oil for five dollars an hour more than what we're paying. And you know the town is is not the highest paying place, but we're generous and we have good benefits, and that has always served us well. But we're in uncharted work, uh, waters right now. But so I, I wanted to just throw out at you for what your thoughts are. Is our voters requested uh, of us at town meeting, and we're going to anticipate have it for this town meeting on uh, leaving the school merger. And Stone just recently went through that, and all of the other towns now have, have authorized Stone to leave. What are your thoughts on that? Is it a worthwhile venture. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Folks who have brought that to your attention, has there been any like articulation of, of why? Like what would what are they looking for? A member of the town stood up at one of our town meetings and uh, well two years ago, regular town meetings, and they made the case before the voters on why <clears throat> being merged did not make sense. We didn't save the money that it was touted that we would say, um, and what the benefits would be of going back to a separated from the unified district. And a, a vote of the voters asked that uh, we bring that back as a, in a formal vote. How that vote will go, I have no clue, but uh, it was a request of the voters at town meeting day to bring this back. And so our intent is to bring it back. I think there's a, a general feeling that there's not a lot of, um, that our town doesn't have an awful lot of voice for the school district. Um, I felt that in particular when um, a few years back, the school decided that they weren't going to, that we merged, and then the unified school board and district decided that they, that our facility, our, our local school facility, wasn't going to be open on weekends, which left us in quite a lurch. And enough people spoke up and screamed about it that, that changed pretty quickly. So I guess that maybe that negates my point that we don't have a lot of points because they did respond. But just that that would happen was pretty scary and um, disruptive. I think there's a general a general sense that we don't have a lot of points in that in that large um, school board. Resentment too when Johnson, I believe we had a half a million dollars in the building fund, and then when it was unified and went to Hyde Park. You know, uh, you take a, a local government that watches their pennies and then they expect to be rewarded for their efforts. And then all of a sudden it 
is taken away from them and given to somebody else, you know? Well, I was on the board when all this happened and the money actually went to a reserve fund that was only allowed for um, building purposes. So it was um, kept with Johnson. It could only be used, it had to be used, had to be used within five years. I actually believe it was. Um, but you're right, we did pick up the cost for the Hyde Park renovation because they passed their renovations as a merged um, district. I think the other thing too is that um, I just know from talking to people in the community and well, and my own experience too, but um, the board is big at the, you know, the modified union um, and it was small here in Johnson and it was very much open to the public and public interaction, much like our select board meetings um, was much more tolerated, I think I would say. There's actually, a, there was actually a dialogue um, I think that's definitely missing. And I think that's part of the transparency and the feeling of disconnection. Um, and, and then, then of course, the you were, of the buildings that went to the district, they did. it harder for, if you want to do something in the school, now you have to ask at, at a different level. And I think that creates a lot of yeah, issues. There's a lot less control in the school. Which yeah. I totally get why Johnson would want to do that, and it's a decision that Johnson's going to have to make for itself. I would tell you, I think that there will be pushback against some of that um, in um, the education um, um, agency itself and in um, um, in the legislature for from the people that originally supported Act 46. The difference between Stowe and um, more so than here is that the State Board of Education overruled the secretary who brought down a plan and said Stowe and Morseville shouldn't be merged. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and the board voted, um, the State Board of Education voted twice. Um, I think it was four to three votes twice. Um, and it was, and, and wasn't the same people each time that moved around. So there is within the education agency itself, uh, uh, they aren't quite sure how to handle Stowe and Morseville because the secretary at the time and the agency itself had recommended to the state board that they not first force them into a merger. So that puts them with a lot of the people that are making those decisions in a different position than this district would be. But um, it, I think there are a lot of things in that 46 and the way that it all came together that make it really difficult when some when people in the town of Johnson who paid for that school um, can't get in the building without calling the superintendent's office first. It, it's not that bad. Well, <laughs> yes, it was but, that bad. It was, but, it was. But, but you've had to work through those issues to get to that. And, um, and I think. Um, but it's those same issues all over the place, you know, so. One last thought, Eric, on your point about the CDL. Mm -hmm. Like when we talk about critical needs scholarships, like I, I never imagined I would be talking to my friends around the county about who has a CDL, uh, but I was and like, and my friend's responses were, yeah, we need CDL drivers too. Uh, so that's really a big deal. And it really is a problem everywhere. I think you all know it from your town, especially. Yep. Oh, I was just going back to the, I, I, these guys have made it far more about it than I do, but, and I dove into it too, meticulously, in part because it wasn't in my district. But it's helpful to know that it, that it might be. Um, it seems to me like no one really knows yet what's going to happen with some of these votes. I mean, I think a lot of this has to get 
worked through the legal avenues, but I can definitely reach out to um, folks and try to understand a little bit more of like how do we anticipate this moving forward. One thing I would say is that I, I know some folks who, unless I'm mistaken, my understanding is that with the merger, it opened things up so that people could allow their kids to go to any of the primary schools within the, that district. And I do know parents in Johnson and some, uh, who are you know sending kids to Hyde Park. And so I do think as a community that would be an aspect to consider is that if you make that decision that might be kids getting pulled out of schools that they're currently in, or how would you navigate that decision? So just some things to I'll be real quick. Um, first, I just want to mention I um, the 23 legislators, I find um, you all to be really uh, extremely accessible and approachable. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, and President Mills, um, I've seen more of you in the last two weeks than I've seen uh, of presidents, college presidents past in years. So I really appreciate your community, community engagement and, and look forward to, to building those relationships. So thank you. Um, in terms of things that we're facing as a community, um, and I think communities all over the state are facing it and will face it more. Um, emergency services were really starting to face a crisis in terms of staff and the EMS, cost of EMS, uh, just the basic structure of policing in Vermont where some towns don't have any coverage at all and the state police go off the road you know, at 1 a.m. or whatever. And so we don't have any coverage. So we have to have this supplemental coverage, this, this um, contract with our local sheriff, which uh, we're really looking at creative ways to solve that through intramunicipal agreements and, and different sorts of arrangements with our neighboring communities. But um, I, I think we're really gonna start seeing a big disparity between rich towns and poor towns in terms of where the, who gets public safety and gets ambulance service and who has to wait or who has to drive themselves. <laughs> and I, I think that's going to be a real uh, a real crisis for our rural areas. So more on that, I'm sure, but yeah, thanks. Thank and I know we've been working with Sheriff's Department around the retirement. Uh, yeah, well that's so, so yeah, you know, hopefully we can we can see something happen. I know Senator West has been working on it and trying to come up with some solutions working with Ryan Martin. So hopefully yeah, um, yeah, hopefully we can um, move um, the government operations um, committee and um, the treasurer's office. Um, the treasurer's office, that every time we brought anything up on that retirement issue, yeah. has come in and testified. And um, it's very hard in this environment with all of the problems within retirement to um, <clears throat> when the treasurer comes in and says absolutely not you know but really what I should say what really kicks me off and, and I, I, I just corrected my language a little bit you know the retirement plan that we want to move our deputies into yeah um we're being penalized because we made a decision in 2003 in the staff washington county has never had a retirement plan for their um their deputies and they just were let into the plan that we would like to move to and it's like i, I don't understand um one of the things we um, have talked about is getting them to do an actuarial study about what is the actual cost of this. So maybe we can take some money and pre fund this to take away some of the issues. But, um, um, you know, um, I've got a bill going in with Jeanette White, the chair of the Government Operations Committee, where the bill will go. So hopefully, um, that will help move the issue along. But I don't understand why. I, I think Orange County and Washington both elected to go into the same retirement plan that we want to move to. And neither one of them has had, had retirements for their deputies. I for the life of me don't understand why the treasurer would let that go through. And 
always in it, I mean, um, be in the way, roadblock me nuts. Ultimately, every sheriff's department should be the same. The same, and it should be very similar to the state department, the, I, the state, because I, otherwise, the state's going to constantly be poaching our people. I, you, know, know, just, you know, you know the story. Yeah. You can talk about it. <laughs> Whatever we can do to, to help um, you guys move that forward and fulfill your work. So we have taken three quarters of an hour for you guys. We were ahead of the schedule before you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, unless there's something. Yeah, I'm being about uh, three quarters of the time. Thanks for being here. Um, Duncan, you got something else? I, I just want to add emphasis to what Matt said, you know. Law enforcement services, in particular emergency services, public, public safety in general. Um, you know, the state is great at um, putting together study committees for this and that and the other thing. I think it's time we have a study committee on public safety throughout Vermont. We're, we're not the only region that's facing this. Um, the retirement is a huge issue, uh, but there are other issues, and there should be ways. Uh, perhaps the union municipal districts are freeing up, you know, making some special um, provisions in union union municipal districts. There's got to be a way to uh, enhance communities' abilities to provide public safety for their citizens. And you know, I think uh, maybe it's time to think about a study committee on that. Can I ask? Is there um is Anybody on the board active like you have been in the past on um, with the lead? Currently, not from Johnson, no. Um, I only bring that up because when you talk about transportation, we have, in a, in a, Brian, you can probably your, you can help me with the program. There's the grant program where we give 350000 once every three years. Um, for specific projects like culverts and those sorts of things. Um, well, there's the better roads program, the transportation alternatives. Yeah, uh, but there's that single grant in there. That grant program helps towns out with a lot of these projects that are larger that they get stuck on. And yep. it's been 350000 every three years for the longest time. And, you know, like if the league would get behind a, a program like that and say, it's been 350 forever, make it 500 or, you know, cut it every two years we could get there. Because a lot of times what blows your budgets out of the water are you'll have some culvert or something that costs half a million bucks that you didn't expect and, and it blows you out of the water. That single grant program is something the legislatures like to fund because they see specific things. And the league hasn't pushed changing that. And I've sat back and thought for a long time, they ought to push that because that's where you guys really on the construction and the physical side. I can't, I, you know, I have to Can tell you. Can you send you the details on that? Yeah, um, and all yeah, but it's yeah. yeah you, <laughs> we'll, we'll you know what the grant program I'm talking about? That, that you know the labor problem. I, I'm not sure we're going to, because it's everywhere and everything. So when you go down there in Montpelier, um, if you're not doing something that we like, you will hear from us. But it's a two-way street, and we need our help. Whether it's giving testimony or what have you, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Reach out. I know you guys do. I certainly want to thank President Mills for coming down and meeting our legislators and the, uh, as well as the select board for the second time. The uh, last point is certainly uh, helping the uh, community a lot in the last couple of weeks. Uh, two different meetings, so it's, it's good to see a president help. And to this point of uh, we all need to float up for us uh, for the college to go up. I think that's a good one. But we do thank you all for coming in and appreciate it. And I uh, wish you the best of luck in your legislative session. I think you are in for a difficult one. And thank President you. Mill, you're <laughs> you're in difficult waters there too.
And any time during the session, you, and I'm going to speak for the other two. Any time during the session, if you see something come up, you want us to come to a meeting. That's it here. Well, appreciate it. Appreciate all of your time tonight. Thank you for coming. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, you want to run out. Yeah, absolutely. It is an open meeting, so you are welcome to stay. So Historical Society, we did get a letter from the Historical Society. We were questioning some, uh, oh, it was on the week that was happening and what's happening on that as far as from our, our side. And uh, we know something about attending meetings regularly. Right? It's like, you know that? Is, that, is that a summary of it? I didn't hear the first part. That we're going to meet here. We're yes. going to get on the roof to fix those leaks. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Don't look at this. Not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a couple of things that it was. Uh, we got a letter from Dick or something from Dick. We were questioning on the leak. What was the status of that? And uh, about coming to regular meetings. And I know, Brian, do you want to give an update on the week? Uh, right now, we've made uh, several phone calls. We had an individual who indicated that they might be able to show up uh, this coming week, but this is the same contractor who's told us that a couple times. Uh, so we're still trying to find anybody to to come, uh, even give us an estimate or, or commit to doing any of the work. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're I don't think we're an especially attractive client for them. Um, you know, the municipality always pays its bills, but we can be. A little bit slower to make decisions to enter into a contract and to, uh, you know, require estimates and everything else. So I, I think the, the contractors have many easier clients to take. So we're at the bottom of the list. And in addition to that, we in the front porch, and, and Tom can speak more specifically as to how and what is. There's bracing on the back, actually exit stairway, it goes from Donnie Garrett's apartment. It braces against the wall, and I think it was mentioned when uh, Westwood was doing the front porch repair that he noticed issues, and Duncan has noticed issues that water is going down those 45 degree or whatever braces that's braced to the wall. And the drawnal siding is J channeled around it so water can flow on those braces in behind the in behind the vital siding. That's one thing we want, wanted to make you aware of. It. That's an easy fix too. Just take the 45s off the wall, put them up, you know. That water's coming in through the wall into the building, and who knows if the rock is going to be in there. But that's relatively simple. I think I think one of our primary interests in meeting with the board was um, we know it's budget season. Um, we know that there is the roof leak in the main part of the building, which is related potentially to an insulation um, issue problem. We know about the porch roof leak, and we know about the you know the issue with the with the back uh, stair that, that uh, Dick just mentioned. We we really encourage the board to think about those issues in terms of your budget as you work on your budget, and hopefully try and include some money in there. 
Um, and I think, yes, the, there was a strong consensus of the full board members that we thought it would be a really good idea for general communication um, if we had kind of a standing. Um, I know in the past, the Planning Commission had a standing spot on your agenda. Sometimes they came, sometimes they didn't, sometimes they submitted a written report. Um, we'd like you to consider the same thing from the Historical Society. And not that we might be there every meeting, but um, if there was an issue that you know needed to be raised, it seems like it would be really nice to just have that agenda slot where we could um, you know address any issues. So we ask your consideration for that as well. So how about we take up each item separately? Um, as far as budgeting, uh, that would be eligible for money out of the uh, buildings and grants uh, reserve fund to make any repairs that you may need. Uh, and, uh, it seems like you guys have been hitting that fairly hard lately. Though. Yeah, um, we, we have. Uh, <clears throat> but we could, when we do our budget, we could put more back into it too. Uh, to Brian's point of, you know, I mean, he has so much time of day to work on stuff. And if we're not even getting contractors calling back, and if it, any of you have been dealing with a contractor lately, it's a very, it's a struggle. They're right out straight, they got two years worth of work. This is not probably a big job for them. So, you know, unless they see a high profit margin, they're probably not going to want to consider it. Uh, and I'm just from my own personal opinion, uh, I'm not sure what the board's position would be, is if you guys took the lead on trying to get a contractor to come there and, and dogging them and just not letting them go until they get the job done, it might be more successful than us trying to do it here with Brian's time. He easily gets diverted to other things. But any thoughts on that? Well, we certainly can try that. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, we're, we're all gray hairs in that society, and we're kind of the caretaker of the building. And, uh, you know, if we don't let you guys know what's happening there, you're not going to know it. The building's going to go, you know, going to get down. Uh, one of the things that bothers me also is the upstairs. Uh, they're good boys, they're good young men, but, you know, we've had that one time with that bathroom leaking down through the ceiling, and that's going to cost big money to get that. Plus, down the road, uh, you know, we're getting more stuff and for us to get on that second floor if it's possible, and the third floor. Uh, you know, it would be a big boom for us. And, and uh, you know, that way that second bathroom could be shut off, and uh, that kitchen could be shut off. We would have to worry about that. It's, it's a big worry of mine because we've been, been through it once. But more importantly, you need the immediate concerns taken care of with the lead oh, yeah, right. and the and, would the rule guys, would you guys consider taking on the lead on dogging some contractors and trying to get somebody in? Well, under our new bylaws, we do have a buildings and grounds committee. Uh, I guess we could refer that to and Tom is on that buildings and grounds committee, I believe. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Um, I guess we could refer it to the buildings and grounds committee and see if they wanted to. Um, you know, take that on and try it. Um, you know, obviously we can't do anything without your right, you got authorization to proceed. But, um, yeah. And before we go much further, I'll open up the board, what the board's thoughts are on that. Taking a little bit off Brian's plate. I do want to point out, Lydia's doing a significant amount of It's providing a lot of assistance with this. <laughs> so I, I do want to correct you know, give her credit for that. Okay. It's sure. been really helpful, but it hasn't actually resulted in the outcome. And, and I don't think we have the luxury of just somebody, you know, in the office dedicated to dogging contractors. And no. And when they don't show up, call them up, say, hey, how come you didn't show up? And 
I, I think that's what it's going to take right now because contractors, it's very difficult to get them. Yeah, uh, it would really work out well if we had somebody who had this uh, relationship with the contractors. So, you know, I, I was using at my house uh, a contractor who is left the industry for something more profitable. So I don't have a contractor that I have a relationship with that I can call anymore for that it's a historical society or for personal things. So mm -hmm. if you have personal relationships with some of these people that could really help us get a foot in the door that we lack right now. Well, I don't know that we have any relationships. I certainly don't because I can't get one even call me back. If you got to call <laughs> yeah. me back, kudos to you. Uh, but I suspect we could probably, you know, can try on our behalf, on, on our end, and then you folk continue on your end. Yeah. Uh, kind of support each other a little we bit. We can see what we can come up with. Yeah. Because I think we need help on this. Yeah. Somebody just talk. I think you guys know the same contract as we know. You know, yeah. I mean, we certainly can put the bug in your ear and see. But additionally, why we wanted to come, um, assuming Duncan is, you've got our budget proposals for the ensuing year, mm -hmm. that part is done. Uh, we have a vacancy, Dean West's retirement from the board that needs to be filled, if possible. So and that falls in your in your Did hands. We get any names or didn't we post that? We didn't get any submissions to that, um, but we can post it again. It's been a while since we okay. we did anything about it. Uh, you yeah, guys have anybody in the hopper who looking to get on or well I, I'll be honest and I've mentioned this to the board as well. I I have thought that you know I, I guess I missed the posting. So um, I, I didn't see the posting. Um, I think I would be interested in submitting my name for Dean's vacancy, which would mean that you guys would need to find someone to be the select board's representative um, on the on the committee um, or on the uh, on the board. But if you're planning to be here every month, what's the representative really needed for? Huh. The purpose of it was for open communication. You guys want to be here slotted on the morning. That seems like an open door to me. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, reasonable. I, I know in the past, Evan, the board originally actually had board, a board member um, sitting on the uh, on the board of the historical society. I think I was the first one that was a non, not a board member, um, you know, sitting on that board. So that's why we kept it in our bylaws that you know there would be a board representative. Um, now, in, under our bylaws, the board representative does not or cannot actually hold any offices within the historical society board itself. And that would, you know, that would continue to be part of our bylaws, I, I assume. So, so that's part of your interest because, as of right now, you can't hold any offices in the historical society. Um, yes, and I, you know, I think in in my case, you know, it's been I don't know how long has it been four or five years since I've been in Brian's um, seat. So my focus over the course of time. Yeah. Has changed a little bit. Um, you know, I am quite honestly um, more interested in being a basic board member of the historical society and advocating for historical society issues. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure that I am fulfilling 
the original intent or role um, being a liaison with your board, uh, which is why I would consider putting my name in. And uh, you know, your point's a good one. Um, maybe it's maybe it's no longer needed. Um, you know, I think I, I think there is value to having someone who is more closely affiliated with the with the town as a you know as a member um, on our board. You know, I think in the past I probably have made comments to the board that um, you know were more town oriented than historical society oriented. Yeah, that may have may or may not have influenced the, you know, the whole board um, in their decision making process. But, but I, I think there's still a role, you know, to play there, um, you know, on our board as a member, as opposed to just open communication. But I guess you know ultimately that would be up to you guys whether or not you feel it's needed anymore or not. Well, I guess my only concern with uh, having a standard. Uh, precedent setting if we uh, have you guys on uh, a standing committee report out on our town or on our every meeting uh, unfortunately I think we may have uh, established this precedent you know we're allowing the racial justice committee now to be a standing committee that monthly reports out and that's sort of the camel's nose under the tent. Now you guys are asking, well, how can we allow one group and not another one? And we could be heading down a path of every committee and board and commission in the town that's going to want to have a, a, a time on our agenda. So I'm not sure that we've done the correct thing here, but. Um, what hurt would I do? Is it doing anyway? We have two meetings a month. There's no reason why every right, but I don't want to see the first half of our agenda is reporting out by every committee in the town. But I, it I doesn't think have to be monthly. The cadence could be set for the committee. I just wrote so down. I mean, what would the harm be if it was quarterly reporting and everyone just rotated? So we had one or two committees each. First one, and, and maybe yeah. that's what we need to give thought to. How we want to? Isn't the racial justice committee a a bit more of a limited term um, committee? Also, I mean, I, I think the historical society is here to stay. Yeah. Um, you know, presumably at some point the racial justice committee is going to come to some um, ultimate conclusion and. Present something and they don't they wouldn't necessarily have to be a standing committee after that time. I, I don't know. I don't I don't know what they are. I think the reason we made them a standing committee is because they were struggling so much getting kicked off, you know, getting their uh, get started. Um, and then it's just been that way since. But. Well, you also all, always used to have um, the planning commission as a. You know, we still do if they want to come in, but they haven't come in for a while. I suspect that nine times out of ten, we wouldn't be there either. But if we, you know, we might, on the other hand, submit a written report, you know, on a monthly basis. Um, That'd be great. I don't see anything wrong with committees giving reports. To the slide board, it keeps us uh, okay. of what's going on. And like Beth said, you know, you could pick up, you know, quarterly, every other month, or whatever. Uh, there's nothing wrong here. I don't think. Well, if, we, if it's for pleasure, we can start doing it. And if it, you know, everybody's thinking it's not working, we need to change it quarterly or some other frequency. Well, I do want to support your point, which is that meeting time is limited. And we need to preserve its focus. We also need to improve, it sounds like, our communication with um, historical society. That's kind of the general idea which you're asking for. But that seven to 10 o'clock twice a month is pretty, mm -hmm. tends to be pretty chock and block full. Well, if people could make it, we'd be starting at 5.5. Yeah, yeah, that's the answer is not just not to, it. the answer is not just to extend any time. We just we just need to be really disciplined with how we use it. So. 
<laughs> so speaking of disciplines, maybe we don't solve this right now. We focus back on the issues with me that's on both of us, which is our agenda. Well, I think if they're willing to take it on, the board's okay with that. Well, I'm not sure we're going to take it on. I mean, take it on. We'll, 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 we'll put our, just put our hand in the fire and yeah. we'll see what we can do. But yeah. We're not handing it over. No. We're, we'll still help with trying to get a hold of somebody uh, and we'll appreciate any assistance you can provide along the same line. Not to open a, not to open a can of worms, but I wonder the condition of that roof overall. The condition of that roof overall, it seems like it's always something with that roof. Um, and if it's. There's only a couple spots that really. Uh, we're talking two different areas, Matt. I mean, you you know the building better than I do, but I just it seems to me that I'm just wondering about the overall condition of the roof. If it's okay, then great. Well, the, the porch roof I has a pretty serious leak, which is causing some additional damage. That is separate from the roof which leaked um, and ran down the wall. And, I understand. Yep. So so they are they are two separate areas, but. Um, are they both in poor condition or is one in reasonable condition and just had a with happenstance? One's in reasonable condition, the other one's pretty poor. Yeah. Poor The Poor is poor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just to, not to be the dead horse, but um, I did meet with um, I'm on his name. Oh, what's that name? Yeah. Dana? Dana. Dana. Yeah. 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 Dana and I, and I, I think I gave a written report to you guys, which yeah. was Dana's suggestion was one of a couple of things, either rip it open and insulate it, which would cure the problem, um, leave it as it is, monitor it carefully throughout the winter, and if in the springtime it leaks, then he thinks it's a different kind of a problem, which would also be cured by insulating it. So I think the ultimate decision that you guys had talked about was ripping it open and insulating it, and that would be the ultimate fix. So, so I think that's where that's the main. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll send it along. Right. It was this spring summer. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what time of year it I was. With Dana. I remember that if we, you and I went out there and we got the call that he was going to be late. Yeah, he was. And I had to go for he something. Didn't show else. up and you had to go somewhere else. So I, I hung around and waited for him to show up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that is our plan. Uh, we just haven't been able to get back. But right now, we need the porch roof and the bracing to the deck or the steps. Those two things need to be fixed. Well, you know, the and the last one, the two eagles, is the porch roof. The reason they say that is it's going to have snow on it this winter. Mm -hmm. And nothing's going to happen now because there's no heat there. But uh, in the spring, next summer, it's going to have to be dealt with. Okay. But that other one, that one where the uh, the uh, back porch um, pillars, if you will, yeah, just take it off the wall and put them upright. Yeah, and I, I, I fill those up with foam and um, try to seal them with um, you know silicon sealer. But that's a that's a temporary fix at best. You know, I did that a couple of years ago, so you know, that's not going to last. That's not going to last forever. And I can tell you, when we did that, I put my finger right through the wall. With those brackets going. So there is some rock there. How bad it is, I don't know. But it isn't going to get better. Okay. It's the main priority is getting the contract. Yeah. Well, we made the estimates. So I'm going to get contracted is get an estimate. Yeah. And it's not going to be less than a thousand dollars. So no, it'll, it'll come back. <laughs> this is what I mean. We're not the easiest client. Yeah. Well, everything's got to come back to you. I don't understand that from our perspective. But what I mean, if you're asking us to do some light work, I guess we need to have a better understanding of what your requirements are going to be, what what you want to see. 
for an estimate. You want three estimates, you aren't going to get them. Over a thousand, correct me if I'm wrong, bro. Over a thousand, it's encouraged, not required. Over 5,000, it requires two quotes. And over 10, sealed bid. Uh, I'd have to double check on the sealed bid. But maybe that one's higher. Uh, over 5,000 is required. There are allowances that we can make under a few different circumstances that I'd have to read the policy again to see what those are. Yeah, I but would, I would too. So we have uh, policies printed. Well, I know, you know, in past times under federal guidance, if you if three bids were required and you had two bidders that said they couldn't bid and put it in writing, that was counted as having gone out for bid and you know having sought three bids. If we can't get more than one bid, then we'll use it. Past. If we can get one bit, well. Okay, so if you guys want to help on that, and uh, we'll have a standing invitation on our agenda for future regular meetings. Now, do we want to, before we close that item, I guess? I mean, you're, you and Matt are both talking about time being important. I understand it. Do we want to go? Because right now, RJC is second meeting every month, correct? <laughs> do we want to push them to every other month and do every other month with the historic society? See how that works for both? I, I think because we're sitting at the same time then. Yeah. Um, I don't you, see you, guys, you guys can decide that. If you would just let us know. Yeah, what you come up with for a decision? I think we will need to be on an agenda twice a month. We're only going to meet once a month. You know, you know that's what you, you said. Know, pick it. Yeah, I was recommending once every two months. That may be fine. Yeah, I mean, if you want to send in the report, that that would be sufficient. Unless there's something going on that you feel like you should be here to. Yeah, you got You get to the item. There's nobody here. Yeah. Historical society, you haven't received any letter, then move on. Okay. Which nine yeah. out of ten, that's probably that's probably what's gonna be. That's great. You know, so we dealt with everything that you only other thing I mentioned, I mentioned to Brian, um, and I think I circulated to you as well. Um air handling system for the building, if that is a legitimate item under the air money, and you have uh, you find you're having some problems finding places to put the hair money. Um, the Holcomb House could definitely benefit from uh, a hair air handling uh, system. Okay. What would the benefits so, be? Is, is that just the occupants in the building want one? Or what would the, the benefits be? Uh, well, the benefit, as I understand it, would be a couple of folks. One, um, we have had some mold and mildew issues. Um, within the building, and an air handling system, I think, could help cure um, any issues related to mold and building. Maybe. What's that? Maybe, but yes. Um, and in terms of my general understanding, I mean, there's been a huge push with all of the air funding to uh, increase air capacity um, or air exchange within buildings for you know health reasons. Um, I think our building is an old building that's pretty well shut up, shut it up. Um, you know, I think it's probably a picture of that from here. You know, the ultimate thing with that, and I think would be to have uh, a heating and ventilating contractor that knew what they were doing, come and do an assessment and, you know, give, give a, 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 an accurate assessment and estimate of what you know what the benefits would be we got we've got some people on the board that uh with breathing problems you know i guess we're all getting older and uh and they're bringing it up at the meetings about breathing and not really you know just soon meet here because they don't have to breathe the air there which is too bad well it's a public building too we've got members of the public you know if we ever get back to a normal situation 
we have members of the public going in that building. <laughs> when we're coming to evaluate it, people have struggles with breathing there. I didn't realize that. Without looking different, fresh air is expensive. That's why I asked. Costs a lot of money to eat zero degree air yeah. yep. all winter long. Uh, it, that's true. And that building, as you may or may not know, is not insulated. So, uh, Which would indicate that you don't need an air exchange if it can fall. It's not a tightly sealed building, so there's probably air. So there's probably fresh air already in there. So yeah, I don't know how much actual exchange there is, but uh, you go in there sometime and take a good snap. I, I would be happy. To. <laughs> I, I understand it's important. It's just very costly every day. Does it smell like formaldehyde? <laughs> <laughs> no, if it smells like formaldehyde, it might be a good day. We did pick up an air purifier. We don't know. We just fucked it up. We donated. See what happens. Merry Christmas. Thank you for your time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Yeah, we'll be in touch if necessary. Yeah, I'll okay. be in touch. Thank you, folks. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Financial security check, boys. All right. So I've got two parts to this. Uh, I'm going to do the updates first. Uh, we've uh, the OCT did publish a new model uh, RFP for auditing services. Uh, it's virtually the same as the old one, so there was no significant updates to our request for proposal. I made a couple changes, but that you would request the first time through and just a couple typos. Um, the OCT is bringing on a new consultant in January uh, and would like to uh, spend a little bit more time talking to us about this request with their new consultant when that person's on, on board. Mm -hmm. So we can just move on from the RFP. Excellent. Have to do our kind of draft. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next one, how much patience is there for going over this in detail? A little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the theme, uh, I've provided comments to most of the questions. Uh, if you read through, um, you know, kind of the way this is formatted, though, there's a, a, a question, sometimes there's a couple of questions, a little block of guidance, and then response notes. So you can read all of my response notes in there. Uh, Rosemary helped me pull this out. Um, Kind of the theme for our responses is that we have good practices and uh, not enough written documentation and policy. We're making improvements on that and we're going to continue to make improvements on it. But um, you know, we need to improve our written policy um, you know, that we've, we've really relied on having little turnover uh, for a long time. Does, is this not going to require a dedicated meeting because we only put our heads around this? Tell uh, the truth. <laughs> it, I mean, it's long. It would take, if we wanted to go over this in great detail, uh, we could devote a whole meeting to it. My recommendation for this would be uh, if you don't have any particular questions, Read it and you know, we can get back to it. This is, there were no big red flags that went up. Rosemary, I think it, that you had the same feeling. There were no kind of red flags that went up uh, when we studied this ourselves. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it's, it's a work in progress. Um, and our, our big focus for financial controls is about our documentation and our written policies. So are you leaving this as homework for us to read this? Yeah, this is your holiday reading. 
Mm. Uh, uh, is this holiday? Uh, are those generally bad? Is that the deal? Mostly, uh, but there are a couple of questions. Just enough to be confusing. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of questions where it flips. Okay. The other thing, guys, is the party submitted. Uh, there really isn't anybody to submit it. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I just signed it because. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. And if anybody asked, yeah, I, I, I was the one that filled it out and uh, added. How about if we put this as a work session meeting in February? And we just, because we're going to be heading into the budget. Yep. Yeah. The other thing we could do, Eric. Just a thought, and I'm totally for a work session on this, by the way. Um, but we could, there's five sections. We could just split it up one section per. One section per meeting? Yeah. Yeah, the five sections. Monitoring is the last section. Report so once information it's and communication and control activities. A risk assessment and control environment. That is actually a little That's different than the way the six steps are provided. Sorry. Transparency and confidence, guidance, continue, uh, That's still a little bit different. It's general controls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, more than that. Uh, controls over financial records. Controls over cash. Controls over account receivable and collections, controls over purchasing and dis disbursements, controls over payroll, controls over brand list and tax record, controls over municipal property and equipment, and controls over information systems. Sorry, there's more than that. It's on page one. We can we can break it up. Um, What's for the pleasure? You want to break it up and have them? Or do you really want to try and tackle it? Bite full every meeting, or you want to tackle it in one work session? My feeling is if we get into one work session, by the time we get to the middle, we're going to be brain dead. Our brain is pretty dry, and we're not going to actually do justice to the rest of it. If it's a dedicated meeting, how long do you think it would take to really go through that and absorb it? Rosemary and I, it took us 45 minutes, maybe. Uh, okay. uh, and then it just I feel like we're going to ask a lot more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Good two hours. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it took us together about 45 minutes, and I spent about another 45 minutes writing the comments. Uh, and I didn't have comments for every question. So, uh, yes. Yeah, I would say at least two hours, three is a little more like So it would be the agenda item for I, I would not recommend anything else of substance. And a good time to have if something dedicated really gonna, is February, because yeah. there's not anything else going on to control town meeting. Yeah. And I can do it from home. And you can do it from home. So why don't we plan on that? And we will have a hard stop of midnight. Won't go any further. We'll do that. Hard stop at midnight. If we could use our second meeting for that, that would be great because that's what we're going to be. Our second meeting, that would be like maybe five minutes. Two hours is fun. Quite exciting, though. The very 20th. Okay. okay. We can manage. Anything else with that? Uh, I'm so I'm I'm taking it as your consent that uh, we're not going to publish the RFP right now. We're going to wait for me yes. to see that the new consultant and can give us the system. Yes, just uh, in case there's any changes. Yeah, and they might be able to help us. They will be able to help us with the more broad financial controls. Uh, so if they tell us, you know. Don't worry so much about auditing right now. You really need to take care of this other thing first. Yep. You know, we can adapt to that. I have, a, I have a, a, a suggestion about financial controls, and that's that um, just I put this out in the middle of board just so everybody gets it. But um, that we not put information about security controls in the packet for general 
distribution. Um, it's obviously public information. If somebody has, uh, you know, wants to do a FOIA request, they can, but just to make it generally available, maybe a little too easy for people to get to figure out how to display. Okay. If that makes sense. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. So, all right. Okay. Uh, our Just January 3rd meeting. Yes. So I want to make a request on our January 3rd meeting. I'm planning on taking time off uh, between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, if we are meeting at our regularly scheduled meeting, that'll be January 3rd, uh, which means I will have to work several days in between then to prep for that meeting. Uh, so I would request that we move the meeting to Wednesday instead, uh, January 5th, and uh, have a agenda that's mostly budget focused. Uh, and I don't have anything else on the agenda right now, uh, but if I only have to prep for the budget, um, that allows me a lot more time off in between and uh, will be easy enough for me to prep uh, at the beginning of the week when I get back. Sounds like a good idea. What Anybody are, have a conflict with Wednesday? What do we have for the budget? The like, January 25th or something like that. Long before that. Long? It needs to be to the printer January 27th. Okay, so we're, what's our hard stop? January 21st. 20th, 21st. Okay. Well, this will be the January 5th meeting, would be our biggie on the budget. January 21st, but that's early this year, isn't it? Well, town meeting is March 1st. That's no, true, yeah. that's early this year. Um, I have a conflict that I could not go to, I would prefer not to. Um, I spent the game that night. Uh, like I said, I could not go to it because <laughs> I have lots of conflicts in life. But if we could do the 10th, that would, that would really be great. Trustees meeting on the second one there. I think we can just meet that first week. The first week. Okay. Get going on the budget. Okay. We or can meet another day. You're going to meet the first meeting? I'm not. We're in the middle of the pandemic. I'm not actually going. Anywhere, but I would just like to not come to the office. You should, you you should not work. Yes. Could you do a Thursday or Friday that week, Phil? Um, it's okay. Well, uh, Friday would be awesome. No, I can't do Friday. That's Wednesday's one. My goal is that. Fifth. Okay. Any Friday would work. work. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We'll plan on that then. And as far as I got, that was all we had for the agenda tonight. Nothing else? I thought we were anything else. Thank you.